My name is Steve Kunz, and the name of my presentation is New Wetland Map for Pennsylvania. How accurate is it? So I'm currently employed as a senior ecologist at Schmidt & Company in Media, Pennsylvania. I've been working as an environmental consultant for a long time now, more than 40 years. I'm certified as a senior ecologist by the Ecological Society of America, and also as a professional wetland scientist by the Society of Wetland Scientists. I've also been a volunteer member of my local environmental advisory council in Schuylkill Township, Chester County for the past 25 plus years. Most of my professional work involves wetlands and water resources, and I'm involved in both the technical and regulatory aspects. I do wetland delineations, environmental inventories, regulatory analyses, permit applications, and expert testimony, among other things. As I said, one of the things I routinely do is wetland delineations. Wetlands are defined by three technical parameters, hydrophytic vegetation, hydric soils, and wetland hydrology. There are technical manuals and resources to help identify each of the three parameters in the field. The NRCS has prepared a document that identifies specific field indicators of hydric soils, which can vary by region of the country. For hydrophytic vegetation, there's a wetland plant list that gives a wetland, in, a wetland indicator rating for most native and introduced plants in the country, based on how frequently that plant is found growing in wetlands. And there are lists of primary and secondary indicators of wetland hydrology. A positive indicator of all three technical parameters must exist for an area to be considered a wetland. Unfortunately, there are no maps of regulated wetlands. That would make things too easy. But it's virtually impossible to field delineate every square foot of the United States or even of Pennsylvania. And even if you did, wetland boundaries can change over time as areas become wetter or drier. But there are some maps that are very useful resources for identifying where you're likely to find wetlands. Some of the most useful ones are USGS maps, uh, NWI maps, FEMA floodplain maps, and soil survey maps. The National Wetland Inventory Maps, or NWI, are widely used to approximate where wetlands may be located, but they were never intended to be used for regulatory purposes on specific project sites. They originally were developed by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service using high-altitude aerial photographs back in the 1980s to map and manage waterfowl habitats. Still, they're useful to consult because often, if NWI maps an area as wetland, it's pretty likely to be wet. A second very useful resource for figuring out where wetlands may be are the county soil survey maps prepared by the NRCS. These maps don't map, map wetlands per se, but they give fairly detailed information about soil types. And for wetland purposes, the most important characteristic in a soil survey is soil drainage class. Areas where the soils are classified as either poorly drained or very poorly drained often are found to be wetlands. Well now, in addition to the NWI maps and the soil survey maps, we have a new wetland map for Pennsylvania. This one was released in the middle of last year and was prepared by some folks at the University of Vermont Spatial Analysis Lab and Ducks Unlimited. The lead author is Sean McFadden, so I refer to this new wetland map as the McFadden mapping. This 26-page June 2019 document uh, that describes the, the mapping techniques isn't available anywhere that I'm aware of, 
but if you email me, I'll send you the PDF, which I had gotten from someone at the Pennsylvania DEP. So now I don't pretend to fully understand the statistical models that McFadden used or even what object-based mapping is. But the McFadden mapping incorporates high resolution land use maps, recent aerial photography, LIDAR topography, and statistical modeling of several hydrogeologic factors to predict and map areas of likely wetlands. And one of the stated goals of the McFadden mapping project was to come up with a set of maps more accurate than the NWI maps. The main point of my analysis is to see if they were successful. Some of the benefits of the new McFadden mapping are that it covers all of Pennsylvania. It follows the same Kawarden uh, wetland classification system as is used for the NWI, and it's available digitally. McFadden maps close to a million freshwater wetland parcels, whereas the NWI maps about 125,000 in Pennsylvania. And McFadden maps about a half a million freshwater wetland lakes and ponds, whereas the NWI maps about 90,000. Here's an example of the McFadden mapping. It looks very much like NWI mapping, and it uses the same four basic wetland classifications, emergent or PEM, scrub shrub or PSS, forest or PFO, and water. The McFadden maps are available online from PASDA, the Pennsylvania Spatial Data Access Site, hosted by Penn State and available at the link shown here. You can search PASDA, and if you search using the keywords modeled wetlands, you get the McFadden mapping. Actually, you get two results, but both of them are McFadden. The second one identifies areas of damaged or disturbed wetlands that would be good places to try to restore wetlands. Um, it's really the first result you want to use if what you're looking for is a map of likely existing wetlands. So now that we have these new McFadden maps, I thought it would be interesting to compare them with the old standbys NWI and hydric soils per the soil surveys. I also wanted to compare the three wetland maps with actual on-site wetland delineations. All three maps and the actual delineations are available in digital format so they can easily be imported into a GIS program and compared and analyzed directly with one another. Like the McFadden maps, the NWI maps are available from PASDA. You can also get NWI maps from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service Wetlands Mapper website. Soil survey information, and in particular, hydric soils based on soil drainage class, is available from the printed county soil surveys. But this same soil information is available digitally from the web soil survey page of NRCS. That's the web address there on the screen. For actual field delineated wetlands, I used work done for the Mariner East 2 pipeline project. Sunoco had its consultants delineate streams and wetlands during the 2014 to 2016 period. Now I have to mention that I had nothing to do with conducting these delineations, so I can't vouch for their accuracy. In fact, I was hired by the Clean Air Council and other environmental groups to analyze and review the Mariner East 2 project with respect to streams and wetlands. And I can tell you that I found numerous instances where wetlands were not delineated or were incorrectly delineated. But I think for the most part, the Sunoco delineations are not too bad. 
So wetland delineations were done within a study corridor several hundred feet wide, centered on the proposed new Mariner East two pipelines that extend more than 300 miles across 17 counties in southern Pennsylvania, from Washington County in the west to Marcus Hook in Delaware County in the east. GIS shape files of the Mariner East II delineations were made available online on the Pennsylvania DEP's Pennsylvania Pipeline portal. This was very useful to people like me and other members of the public who were trying to understand and review the proposed Mariner East II project. And it sure would be very helpful and useful uh, if this type of GIS information was made available more often on other particularly large pipeline or linear projects like this one, simply for the sake of public disclosure and transparency. It would have been extremely time consuming to try to compare the McFadden and other wetland maps with the actual field delineations across 300 miles. So I decided to analyze one county in each of the three major physiographic provinces. Physiographic provinces are defined by their physical and geologic characteristics, and I thought it would be interesting to see if there were differences from one region to another. So I chose Westmoreland County in the Appalachian Plateau in the west, Huntingdon County in the Ridgeon Valley in central Pennsylvania, and Chester County in the Piedmont Province in eastern Pennsylvania. Here's an example of the actual Mariner East II field delineations in a section of the pipeline corridor in Chester County near Exton, PA. I used a uniform 315 foot wide study corridor for my analysis. The Mariner East II delineations sometimes didn't extend quite that far, <clears throat> like here, but more often they went way beyond my study corridor in which case I only examined what was mapped within the 315 foot corridor. Anyway, here we have five separate wetlands, including two PFO forested wetlands, two PEM emergent wetlands, and one PSS scrub shrub wetland. You could consider this two wetlands, one large and one small, but the Mariner East two delineations distinguished separate wetland types as separate wetlands, and so for my purposes, I did the same. So here is the same location and the shaded Mariner East two delineations, but with the NWI mapping added in crosshatch. The NWI map here identifies one cigar shaped PFO wetland that partly overlaps with a delineated PFO wetland. For my analysis, a mapped wetland merely needs to overlap somewhere with the Mariner East II delineated wetland. They don't need to be the exact same size or configuration. Here is the same area, but now showing a McFadden mapping instead of NWI. Like NWI, McFadden maps a PFO wetland across hatched area that partly overlaps a Mariner East II delineated PFO wetland. And here I've added hydric soils in purple, while also showing the shaded ME2 delineations and the cross-hatched NWI and McFadden mapping. So in this instance, I would have counted NWI and McFadden as correctly overlapping one wetland and the hydric soils as correctly overlapping three of the five wetlands. So that's what I did. I started with the Mariner East II delineations within a 315 foot wide corridor and then added the various mapping sources, NWI, Hydric Soils, and McFadden. So the Chester County corridor is almost 24 miles long and so it encompasses about 900 acres. The Huntingdon County corridor is about 27 miles long and it encompasses 1,010 acres. And the Westmoreland County corridor is 38 miles long and it encompasses 1,410 acres. So in the study corridor for Chester County, 
Sunoco field delineated 10 ponds and 77 wetlands for a total of 87 features. For the corridor in Huntingdon County, they delineated five ponds and 106 wetlands. And in Westmoreland County, Sunoco delineated five ponds and 123 wetlands. Adding all three counties together, there were 20 ponds and 306 wetlands delineated by Sunoco within the corridor of the Mariner East II pipeline project for a total of 326 water resource features. So with that as my starting point, I then looked to see how many ponds and wetlands overlapped with the delineated features according to each of the resource maps. In this part of the analysis, I only focus on the number of delineated features correctly identified, not the type, such as forested or emergent wetland, which I will get into in a moment. So for Chester County, the NWI correctly overlapped with four out of 10 delineated ponds and nine out of 77 delineated wetlands, which totals 13 out of 87 features, for an accuracy of only 15%. Again, I'm making the assumption that the field delineated wetlands are accurate, and so I compare the so-called accuracy of the resource maps against them. So for soils in Chester County, the mapped hydric soils overlapped with four out of 10 delineated ponds and 36 out of 77 delineated wetlands, which totals 40 out of 87 features for a much better accuracy of 46%. Remember, NWI overlapped with only 15% of the delineated features. And for McFadden mapping in Chester County, they overlapped with nine out of 10 ponds and 26 out of 77 delineated wetlands, which totals 35 out of 87 features for an accuracy of 40%. Now the 40% was much better than the 15% for NWI, but not quite as good as the hydric soils, which found 46%. So looking at all three source maps side by side, we see that McFadden did the best job in identifying ponds, but hydric soils overlapped most often with delineated wetlands. And hydric soils also came out on top overall in Chester County. So I did the same analysis for Huntington County, but here I'll just show you the summary table. Here McFadden and Hydric Soils both found 40% of the delineated ponds, two out of five, and McFadden just edged out Hydric Soils in overlapping the most delineated wetlands. Here are the results for Westmoreland County. Again, McFadden and Hydric Soils both found more ponds than NWI, and McFadden matched the most delineated wetlands and features overall. But still, that was only 20%, not the greatest accuracy. But it was interesting how the quote unquote accuracy varied by region. From a poor score of 20% in Westmoreland County from, for McFadden mapping to a high of 46% in Chester County uh, for the hydric soils mapping. Combining all three counties together, McFadden correctly identified the most ponds, and McFadden and Hydric Soils each overlapped the most delineated wetlands, giving McFadden a slight overall edge at 32%. I also looked at how well each of the map sources agreed or disagreed with one another in identifying delineated ponds and wetlands. In Chester County, all three sources correctly identified only six out of the 87 delineated features, or 7%. It was more common that none of the three sources correctly overlapped with a delineated feature. In Chester County, that happened for 31% of the delineated features. Here are the numbers for Chester County in terms of whether one, two, all three or none of the map sources correctly identified a delineated feature. As I mentioned, 
31% of the delineated features were identified by none of the three map sources. But the converse of that is encouraging. At least one of the three map sources correctly identified 69% of the delineated features. That was in Chester County. In the other two counties, the percentage was not as high. So in Huntington County, 43% of the delineated features were identified by none of the three map sources, which means that at least one of the map sources correctly identified 57% of the delineated features. And in Westmoreland County, 70% of the delineated features were missed by all three map sources, which means that at least one of the map sources correctly identified only 30% of the delineated features. So I found a pretty wide range of accuracy across the three counties, from a low of 30% in Westmoreland County to a high of 69% in Chester County. Combining the results for the three counties, we see that overall, the map sources only correctly identified about half of the delineated features. What this tells me is that no single map or even combination of map sources can be relied on to correctly identify regulated wetlands. It really is important to have boots on the ground field investigations. So now I just wanna switch gears a little and talk briefly about correctly classifying wetlands as forest, scrub, or herbaceous. It should not be that difficult to distinguish a forest from a grassy field. But one of the things I found in examining the Mariner East II wetland delineations was that they seem to have find a whole lot more grasslands, herbaceous vegetation, than forest. Let me show you what I mean. Here's an aerial photo of a section of the Mariner East II corridor in Perry County in South Central Pennsylvania about five years ago prior to permit approval and construction. You can see the narrow, mowed, and maintained corridor of the existing Mariner East 1 pipeline within the purple-lined corridor going left to right. And you can also see a road that crosses here from top right to bottom left. And almost everything else looks either forested or at least forest and shrubs. Now here are the wetlands as delineated in this section of the corridor for Sunoco's proposed Mariner East 2 pipeline. Light green is emergent wetland, orange is scrub shrub, and dark green is forested wetland. Here's the same delineations superimposed on the aerial photograph. You would expect the narrow existing pipeline corridor to be herbaceous, but Sunoco has mapped herbaceous wetland in light green way beyond that narrow corridor, in some places as much as 100 feet into the woods. Now here's what NWI mapped in this area. No wetlands, just a narrow stream corridor over on the right side in dark blue. Now here's the hydric soils mapping for this area in purple a wide area that intersects five of the Mariner East II delineated wetlands. And here's what McFadden mapped in the same area, very similar to the hydric soils mapping, even wider in some areas. And McFadden also overlaps five of the Mariner East II delineated wetlands. Note that McFadden classifies the entire patch as forested wetland. None of the, the map sources identified the wetlands delineated on the left side of this slide. I looked at this area in the field, and I have to give credit to Sunoco for identifying any wetlands there at all, because unlike the wetlands on the right, which are down in the floodplain, the wetlands on the left are much higher in elevation, in a small depression in a hillside. So for the next few slides, I'm going to focus on this area on the left here. Here, superimposed on the aerial, is what Sunoco mapped. Light green is herbaceous wetland, and orange is scrub shrub. No forested wetland was mapped here. 
The next slide is a photo looking down in the direction of the arrow, down uh, the existing pipeline right of way. And you'll see a young man standing where you see the black dot here on the edge of the right of way. So here you're looking eastward and the cleared right of way is evident. You might notice that the topography goes down to the floodplain wetlands we just saw, and then it goes up again and over the mountain in the background. The young man here is standing next to a tree with an orange ribbon tied around it. There at the yellow arrow is the orange ribbon on the tree. So the next slide is a photograph taken perpendicular to the last one, with the young man still standing next to the tree with the orange ribbon. The, the young man is standing right at the edge of the woods here, but the Sunoco delineation says that the area behind the man is herbaceous wetland. I'm thinking this may be an example of not seeing the forest for the trees. Sorry, I couldn't resist. Here's a comparison of the Mariner East II delineated wetlands and their cover types with the mapped wetlands per NWI and McFadden and their cover types for Chester County. Hydric soils mapping is excluded because the soils only suggest where wetlands may be and not any cover type. Sunoco says that 66% of the wetlands it mapped in their corridor in Chester County were herbaceous wetlands, PEM, while NWI and McFadden say PEM accounts only for about 25%. It's even worse in Huntington County, where Sunoco says almost three quarters of its wetlands are PEM herbaceous, but NWI and McFadden are consistent with one another and say that PEM only accounts for 13% of the wetlands in the corridor. And in Westmoreland County, Sunoco maps 71% of its wetlands as PEM and only 29% as either PFO or PSS, whereas NWI and McFadden show basically the opposite. For all three counties together, the Mariner East II delineated wetlands were characterized as PEM 70% of the time, compared to only 13% for NWI and 23% for McFadden. What accounts for this pattern of mapping so much PEM and so little PFO when after all, we're talking about Penn's Woods. It sure looks suspicious. I personally believe that it was intentional misrepresentation on the part of Sunoco. And since the Pennsylvania DEP never checks these things in the field, they never noticed. So why would Sunoco do that, you ask? Because if they disturb a forested wetland and turn it into a PEM wetland above their permanently maintained right-of-way corridor, then they have to provide compensatory mitigation, which could be expensive. But if the wetland is PEM already, they don't have to mitigate because it's just a temporary disturbance. So in conclusion, I would say that the new McFadden mapping is okay. C plus, maybe B minus. Not great, but definitely better than the NWI. So in that sense, they accomplished one of their goals. And I found that the McFadden mapping was usually, but not always somewhat more accurate than the hydric soils mapping. But what's clear is that no single map, not McFadden, NWI, or soils, is perfectly accurate. And if you consider all three of the maps together, you'll be more accurate in finding wetlands than using only one or two of them. However, my analysis found that using all three together still only identified about 50% of actual delineated wetlands overall. There's no map that can substitute for actual boots on the ground field delineation if your goal is to identify regulated wetlands on a project site. These maps are a very valuable tool to direct you to where to look on the ground for wetlands, but they are only a tool. So it's good to have the McFadden maps as one more tool in the box. That concludes my presentation. I'm scheduled to answer questions you may have live in the 5.30 to 6 p.m. time 
slot on Wednesday, September 23rd. Thanks for listening.